After watching Good to Be Bad, we've come up with some new and exciting theories that just might surprise you. Keep watching to find out which lady of the court might prove herself to be a wicked warrior. Now let's jump right into what we think will happen once the BKs announce who the new wave of villain kids are. Attention Isle of the Lost, BK Day is today. I repeat, BK Day is today. An uprising. The announcer dude in the VK Day teaser said that Mal and her friends would be choosing four villain kids to go to Aradon Prep on VK Day. But why only four? And why is it only up to Mal, Evie, Carlos, and Jay? It seems like a recipe for a lot of disappointment. We can see that there are a ton of kids applying for a shot to leave the aisle and go to Aradon. When only four kids get to go, there is going to be some major storm of resentment all across the aisle. This will give Mal's enemies, like Uma and her crew, a lot of power over the disgruntled villain kids who are left on the aisle, and from what we've seen in other trailers, that's the last thing Mal needs right now. This could wind up creating an uprising and revolt of villain kids who are left behind. The song, It's Good To Be Bad, is a power jam that encourages kids to celebrate who they are and where they come from, but the message seems to be a bit mixed. They are telling the VKs to embrace their roots, but only selecting four of them to have the opportunity to rise up and create a better life. Mal sings about how everybody wants to be like them. That's kind of rubbing it in for the majority of the VK population since so few are going to be able to get off the aisle. So who will go and who will stay? Let's take a closer look. Celia in the Good To Be Bad video, Mal visits Celia at her fortune-telling booth to encourage her to apply for a spot at Arazon. Celia seems like a good kid with a lot of promise, but we know from past trailers that she foretells a pretty dark prophecy about the fate of Mal, Evie, Carlos, and Jay. And all in poor Donald pay. So will Celia be selected as one of the four lucky villain kids getting off the aisle? Or will she be left behind to fend for herself in that dark and hopeless place? We haven't really seen her in Aradon in any of the trailers, except for the one where she is holding Dude the Dog behind those armored guards. So what is this girl up to? Maybe she used a bit of trickery to give her an advantage in the VK Day application process. If she gets caught cheating, that would immediately disqualify her from going to Aradon. It's fair to say that she probably wouldn't take it well. Learning how to lose gracefully doesn't seem like a thing many villain parents would teach their kids. So, will Celia team up with Uma? We know Uma has a pretty major score to settle with Mal. Celia could be a useful asset to help Uma exact her revenge. But just what kind of evil plot does she have in mind? Hades We've seen Celia unlocking what appears to be the underground prison where Hades is locked away. Oh, you shouldn't have come here. And we've also seen Uma holding Hades' ember. It all goes together somehow, but how exactly? Well, if our theory about Celia and Uma forming an alliance is accurate, it makes perfect sense. Maybe Uma convinces Celia to free Hades from his underground jail so he can help them infiltrate Aradon. We know that Hades was able to get his arm through that hole in the barrier, and we also heard Mal say something or someone was draining her powers. It's likely that Hades' ember is responsible for Mal's loss of power. But how exactly does Uma get a hold of Hades' ember? It doesn't seem like something he would misplace or just leave lying around. That's where Celia comes in. If Celia is anything like her dad, Dr. Fasilier, she's got plenty of tricks up her sleeves. Maybe Celia lifted the ember off of Hades without him realizing it. Then she could give it to Uma and they could both get even with Mal for casting them out. Come to think of it, maybe Uma and Celia are the ones draining Mal's powers. Dizzy it's pretty much a given that Dizzy is going to be one of the four BKs who gets picked to leave the aisle and go to Aradon. We'd love you to join us at Auradon Prep. We know how much Mal and Evie adore her. She's responsible for the most wicked cool hairstyles on the aisle. The ladies at Aradon would be lining up around the block to get into Dizzy's salon. We saw Dizzy asleep on a couch in what looks like a castle in Aradon in the Big Sleep trailer. That's a pretty good indicator that she made it off the aisle and is one of the chosen ones. We also saw Smee's twin boys fast asleep on the other side of the couch. If Smee is one of the villains on the aisle, that would make his twin boys Squeaky and Squirmy, villain kids from the aisle too. So if Dizzy, Squeaky, and Squirmy were all picked to leave the aisle to go to Aradon, that leaves only one spot open. So if Celia isn't the fourth, who will it be? And what will the overall message of Descendants 3 be? Misfits and Warriors 
Sophia Carson recently gave a pretty revealing interview about the new Descendants movie. She said the thing she's always loved so much about the Descendants films is that they stand for much more than fairy tales. She said they stand for the outcasts, the misfits, and the ones who feel they don't fit in. This is something we can all relate to because we've all felt that way at one time or another. Sophia went on to say that Descendants 3 is a beautiful and empowering story, and this is the most intriguing part of it all. Sophia shared that the message of this film is almost political. Without giving too much away, she said the movie really reflects the current time in which we are living. She marveled at how cathartic and beautiful the finale is, and she also revealed that the director, Kenny Ortega, called Evie the Joan of Arc of the story. She alluded that we will see more of Evie's warrior side in the upcoming film, so this lady of the court will definitely bring her A-game come the threequel. This leads us to even more unanswered questions about the fate of the VKs. All we know for sure is that the film promises to be bigger and badder than the first two. After seeing that incredible opening number, we can't wait to see the rest. So, if the choice was yours, which VKs would you choose to bring to Art on Prep? Sound off in the comment section. And that's a wrap. To be the first to see our latest videos, be sure to subscribe to the things and give us a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.